Hello, and welcome to the Federal Railroad Administration's Rail Program Delivery video series. I'm Anthony Thomas, and I'm pleased to introduce Calvin Gibson, the Civil Rights Director with the FRA. Hello, everyone. In this video, you'll learn about the basics of the Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA, and how it applies to FRA-assisted rail projects. The ADA was enacted in 1990 to prohibit discrimination and ensure equal opportunity for persons with disabilities in employment, state and local government services, public accommodations, commercial facilities, and transportation. That last one is where we come in. Rail stations and trains fall under the covenants of the ADA. While you must address ADA compliance in all rail projects, this video will focus on ADA compliance for rail stations. All rail projects that accommodate the public, whether publicly or privately funded, must be made accessible to individuals with disabilities. This means that rail stations must be accessible to individuals who may have visual, hearing, or other physical impairments. When it comes to planning rail projects, project sponsors should consider ADA compliance in each of the project development phases. Planning, environmental review, preliminary engineering, final design, and construction. Considering ADA requirements early in the project development process will make it easier to address issues as they arise, to ensure that your project complies with the guidelines of the ADA, and to reduce delays in the project development process. But you may be asking yourself, for what kinds of station improvements do ADA guidelines kick in? Great question. Just keep this in mind. All areas of newly designed and newly constructed rail stations and facilities and altered portions of existing stations and facilities shall comply with ADA requirements. Adding a new platform or entrance to the station would trigger ADA guidelines, but painting the walls would not. In addition, stations with intercity passenger rail service must be made ADA compliant, even if there are no projects planned at that station. To ensure that your existing or planned stations are fully ADA compliant, you should consider accessibility in three areas. First, the station must be accessible in the approach from the public right-of-way. Second, the routes and services within the station must be accessible. Finally, the station's platforms, from which passengers board the train, must also be accessible. Let's get into the details of these three categories of ADA compliance. To comply with the ADA, the approach to the rail station must be accessible to individuals with disabilities. There are several components that make access to the station compliant. They include parking, public access routes, wayfinding, doorways, and ramps and elevators. We'll go through each of these briefly now. If your rail station includes parking, accessible parking spaces must be provided in order to minimize the path from vehicle to station. Accessible parking spaces should be wider than typical parking spaces and should also come with access aisles. Access aisles should always adjoin an accessible route and be clearly marked to discourage people from parking on them. Accessible parking should be located on the shortest accessible route of travel from adjacent parking to an accessible entrance and should be designated as reserved using the symbol of accessibility. Be sure to follow the requirements at ada.gov for information about the number, size, and type of accessible parking spaces you'll need to provide. Accessible routes provide a continuous and unobstructed path from the public right-of-way, such as sidewalks, to the station. The route should have a minimum clear width of 36 inches so that individuals in wheelchairs can navigate the route. Finally. All accessible routes are required to include the international symbol of accessibility. If the station is served by public transit or other modes of transportation, the routes from them to the station must be accessible. The walking surfaces should be as flat as possible with a running slope no steeper than 1 in 20 or 5% and should be stable, firm, and slip resistant. If the accessible route to the rail station requires users to cross railroad tracks, all of the previously mentioned requirements remain. In addition, the wheel flange ways shall not be wider than two and a half inches. This will help to keep people with mobility impairments from getting caught in or tripping over the tracks. 
Signs should be posted to direct patrons to the nearest accessible entrance. This is especially important if the accessible entrance is not clearly visible. Please visit ada.gov for more information about signage details and placement. Revolving doors, gates, and turnstiles should not be part of an accessible route. Other doorways should meet a minimum width of 32 inches clear. FRA suggests that push buttons are used to automatically open the doors. If push buttons are not used, the door must meet handle and weight requirements. Any ramps should have a running slope no steeper than 1 in 12, or 8.3%. The ramps should have landings after every rise of 30 inches. Finally, the ADA and other federal civil rights laws require that accessible features be maintained in working order so that they are accessible to and usable by the people who they are intended to benefit. That means keeping elevators in operation. Elevators or lifts are a way to provide vertical access when there isn't enough room for a ramp. Once inside the station, there are some additional things to consider. Some of the major concerns inside a rail station for individuals with disabilities are doorways, ticket counters, water fountains and restrooms, wayfinding, announcements, ramps and elevators, and floor surfaces. Simply put, Individuals with disabilities should be able to access all of the services and trains that able-bodied individuals can. All accessible doorways must meet the minimum standard of 32 inches clear. For ticket encounters, different care must be taken for different approach types. First, there are parallel approach ticket counters where the patron is beside the counter. In these cases, there must be a portion of the counter that is at least 36 inches long and at most 36 inches high. Then, there are forward approach counters. In these cases, the patron is perpendicular to the ticket counter. Here, the counter must be at least 30 inches long and at most 36 inches high. In the forward approach case, knee and toe clearance must be provided under the counter area. Water fountains should have a clear ground space and be manageable by forward approach. Remember to keep knee and toe space in mind. For restrooms, check ADA regulations for information about the number, size, and placement of accessible restroom stalls. A combination of static signs, variable messaging signs, and public address systems can be used to help people navigate the station, particularly to find accessible routes and amenities and to know when and where their train is boarding. All visual text signs with raised characters should be uppercase for blind or vision impaired users who do not read Braille. For users who do read Braille, all signage should be accompanied by standard English Braille. Remember to provide ramps and elevators as alternatives to stairs. Don't forget to keep ramp slopes below 1 in 12 or 8.3%. Also, make sure to look down at the ground. Floor and ground surfaces should be stable, firm, and slip resistant. Finally, the station platforms and access from them to the trains must be accessible. Many of the same accessibility points previously mentioned apply in this section, including doorways, wayfinding, and announcements, so we won't go over those again right now. Let's focus on a couple new components which are important to keep in mind. Platform characteristics, boarding, and platform information. A key component of safety on station platforms is tactile feedback. Tactile feedback informs individuals that they are approaching an unprotected drop-off or another potential danger like a pedestrian grade crossing or a highway grade crossing within a platform. This isn't just useful for the visually impaired. It helps all users, especially those distracted by their cell phones. Tactile feedback is most often found as the brightly colored borders along the edge of a platform with raised domes and rough surfaces. These borders notify individuals that they have reached the edge of the platform. Another very important component of platform accessibility is the transition from the platform to the train itself. In new or renovated stations, the rail to platform height should be coordinated with the floor height of passenger train vehicles, such that the vertical distance between the platform and train floor is minimized. This is called level boarding. This allows easier access to the train for boarding and alighting, 
especially for individuals who use wheelchairs. The first priority for rail stations adjoining tracks owned by a public entity is level boarding. In privately owned railroads and on sharp curves on publicly owned tracks, there must be a minimum 8-inch high platform. Otherwise, level boarding platforms need to be coordinated with the lowest car floor height serving the station. In some cases, the configuration of the tracks may make level boarding infeasible. In these cases, you must provide accessible alternatives for individuals with disabilities. Non-level boarding platforms may include bridge plates, ramps, mini high platforms, or station-based lifts. All of these methods provide access to the passenger cars by allowing wheelchair users to avoid the use of stairs. Bridge plates can be placed between the platform and the train to avoid the gap. Ramps and station-based lifts can be used to overcome the height difference between the train and the platform. Many high platforms are sections of the main platform with a higher elevation to provide semi-level boarding. Remember, however, that none of these platform boarding options should be used as an alternative to level boarding, if level boarding is feasible. Platform widths are also an important aspect of platform accessibility. Non-level boarding platforms should be wider than those with level boarding to allow extra room for bridge plates and lifts as necessary. Also, inloading island platforms need to be wider than conventional platforms. This chart briefly summarizes the width requirements of ADA-compliant platforms. Another key issue is the platform length. FRA discourages the use of short platforms, which would require multiple stops to allow passengers to get off the train, or that would require passengers to travel through multiple train cars to disembark. Signage is also a key to delivering platform information about accessibility. Signs should indicate accessible entrances, routes and destinations, and station names. Station names need to be visible to a person seated on either side of a train car and placed at both ends and at multiple locations along a platform. And don't forget, wherever public address systems convey audible information to the public, the same information should be provided in a visual format. In combination, audible announcements and variable messaging systems ensure that all users receive important information. Now that we've gone over the focus areas of ADA, let's discuss the triggers of ADA compliance. For all new or renovated rail stations, ADA regulations must be followed. When a station is undergoing routine maintenance, ADA regulations do not have to be incorporated. However, at the point where maintenance becomes alteration, applicable ADA guidelines must be followed. So if you're just painting a wall, you don't have to incorporate ADA. But if you're altering any part of the path of travel, you're required to keep accessibility in mind. But remember, all stations with inner city rail service must be made compliant even if alterations are not planned. The FRA can provide guidance on when ADA regulations should be incorporated. Contact the FRA Office of Civil Rights with any questions or concerns for your projects. To avoid project delays, keep ADA in mind early and often. At all points during project development, the project sponsor should document that they have addressed the ADA regulations in their project development documents. The project sponsor must also submit a plan to the FRA describing its proposed means to meet the ADA performance standards. In places where a station is jointly served by intercity passenger rail service and commuter rail service, both the FRA and FTA must concur with what accessibility measures are proposed. Now let's talk about filing complaints. Any individual or organization that believes they have been denied benefits excluded from participation or subject to discrimination on the grounds of disability can file an administrative complaint with the FRA Office of Civil Rights. More information on filing a complaint can be found on the FRA's website. Let's review what we've learned by going through a quick quiz. Question 1. True or false? When dealing with ADA compliance in a rail station, access only needs to be provided for individuals in wheelchairs. False.
ADA compliance must address all types of disabilities, including not only mobility, but hearing and visual impairments as well. Question 2. Which of these five scenarios would trigger ADA regulations? Replacing the roof, adding a new platform, adding a new entrance to the building, repainting walls, and an intercity rail station which is out of compliance. Replacing the roof of a rail station would not trigger ADA regulations since there would be no real change to the access of the station. Adding a new platform to a rail station would require ADA regulations to be followed. The addition would need to be completely accessible to individuals with disabilities. Similarly to the previous example, adding a new entrance to the station would require following ADA regulations as it would change the path of travel. Since pinning the walls in a station doesn't affect access issues, ADA regulations would not kick in here. Finally, if the station has inner city rail service and is not in compliance, the station must be made ADA compliant. Congratulations, you passed the quiz. The vision is simple, to eliminate the gaps in transportation infrastructure. The ADA is just one component of a larger goal to improve access for individuals with disabilities. It is one step toward creating a more robust, safe, and equitable transportation system for all. For more information on the Americans with Disabilities Act, please visit the following web pages. Thank you.